What are the different design approaches that can be used to develop SOAP-based web services? By the end of this lecture, you will learn the two different approaches that can be used to design SOAP-based web services, at the advantages and disadvantages of each of those, and when to use which. The, the first of the two different SOAP web services design approaches is the contract first or visual first or top-down approach. This is where we create the WSDL file first. We then generate the stubs or the language objects from this WSDL file. We then implement those stubs and use the beans that got generated and implement our web services endpoint class. We then publish that endpoint class through a configuration file. So to create a WSDL file, we typically have tools or IDEs that will help us. Once we do that, we can generate the stubs using tools like WSDL to Java. Every programming language and platform has an appropriate tool to generate the language objects. The advantages of WSDL first approach or contract first approach is that the WSDL can be easily understood by the business analysts, testers and programmers. Once you know the structure, it's all XML. So the request and response messages that are defined in the WSDL can be easily evaluated and confirmed by the business. Since we come up with the WSDL file first, we can hand over the WSDL file to our web services consumer so that they can parallelly do their development. By the time we complete our provider and deploy our application, the consumers can also be ready. If there are any disadvantages, I hear this a lot from my students and colleagues, it is coming up with the WSDL file itself. But once we learn the structure of the WSDL file and the tools and create some WSDL files, it will be fairly easy to do that. The next approach, the second approach is the contract last or code first or bottom up approach. This is where we create the code first, the classes, interfaces, etc. We then annotate this code. In case of Java, we annotate them with JAX-WS annotations and JAX-B annotations. We then publish the endpoint and the web services stack will generate the WSDL file from our code on the fly. The advantages of this approach are there is less learning curve here. Since you already know the programming language, you can easily code. If you are exposing out legacy applications which are already there for which the code is already written, then of course you have to use the code first approach. Simply annotate the code itself or write one more wrapper layer above it and then ex expose it out as web service. The disadvantages, we can have interoperability issues, especially if we start using all the data structures that are available in a particular programming language. And if another platform doesn't support it, then the message that goes out cannot be converted back into a, another platform's data structure. So you should be careful when doing code first approach. Another disadvantage, less control on the XML that gets generated. In case of contract first approach, since we define the schema and everything from scratch in the visual file, we have more control on the request and response objects or request and response XMLs. Now that you know these two approaches, which one to use when? So as far as possible, as much as possible, we should be doing the contract first approach wherein we create the WSDL file first. Only when we are dealing with legacy applications where it is impossible to start from scratch, we should be using the Java first approach. If you feel that the visual first approach is difficult, you can start with the Java first approach, generate the skeleton visual, and then from that point in time, do the visual first approach where you change the visual and then generate the stubs.